we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father, who is the source of all blessings, we thank you for giving us happiness. Am I living a life of happiness? Today, through the word, may we discern. May we not have this blessing taken away. May we surely receive with happiness. May all the families sing praises. To many people, may our lives shine upon them. By giving benefit to others, may our descendants receive blessings. May many souls realize and return to the Lord. And may the fruits of our lives, may they please you. We believe that all our problems will be solved. It's because of my thoughts that I was ruined. These wrongs may we change to happiness. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Do you believe that God is living? Do you believe that he loves you more than your own mother? God, who loves you more than your own mother, God who is almighty. So he says, this is what a happy person is living like. And he asks, Pastor Parker, are you living like that? So this is the time that he's asking us. So if we're not living like that, then we just have to fix what's wrong. Then we will become happy. So Psalms chapter 37, verse 5. Let's first read verse 5 and then we'll read 6. So what is happiness? God, who loves us more than our mothers. So at this place, Isaiah 49, verse 15, he says, I love you more than your mother. I love you more than your own mother. So don't be discouraged if your mother passed away when you were young. God, who is living now. God, who is more precious than your mother. God, who is almighty. He who is living. This is his promise. To the righteous, he gives happiness. So if you've received happiness, what is it like? Well, that's someone who straight away you entrust your life to your mother. You know, from kindergarten, you learn how to wear your own clothes, how you get potty trained. Or everything in this world, all you learn is to do things by my strength. So because you li live like that in front of God, that's why you're ruined. If I do it, I'll be ruined. But everything you pay to learn is to learn I'll, for me to do it. But God says, but God says, I'll do it. So it's the world's learning that is opposite. Whereas this is truth. Someone who's learned a lot, what they don't know is that they shouldn't bring that to God. That's the problem. Everything that I do, I do, 100% you'll be ruined. So happiness, if I do things by my strength, my thoughts, there's no happiness. But to the righteous, they receive the promise of happiness. So the righteous is someone who entrusts their whole lives to him. Let's read verse 5 first. Commit your way to Jehovah. Trust also in him, and he will do it. Amen. So where do we entrust our way? We have to entrust to God. In the world... We pay to learn, oh, you do it. In kindergarten, you get, you wear your clothes, you put away your dishes, you, everything you have to do. Until you graduate from university, until you get a doctorate, it's you have to do it. God says, entrust to me, entrust to me. So it seems, com it seems opposite. What you learn with your money it's all, it's all opposite, in reverse. So starting from those teachers that teach, you see if they're not ruined. The smartest teachers, they get selected, they become prime minister, the prime minister, they become a state minister. But you see if they're not ruined. They, they ruin everything. They ruin themselves, they ruin the country, they ruin everything. That is what the whole world looks like. We're not just talking about our, pointing out our country. You know, if they were doing so well, why is it they keep changing and replacing and switching? It's because it, it's not working. You know, why do they keep changing and replacing? Because 
they put all these smart people there, but it doesn't work. So they keep switching over. And so that's why this the government's ruined, the, the country's ruined. It's not just, it, it, this is what the truth says. But whatever I do, it's ruined. If you entrust everything, that is happiness. And that's in verse 6. It's the righteous, it's, the, it's someone who has entrusted everything. And it's the righteous who he gives happiness to. So if you say, oh, I'll do something, that's someone who's unhappy. They're going to be ruined. Someone who entrusts everything and they're at peace, as long as I am repenting. Someone who repents, are they evil or are they righteous? So as long as you're righteous, it's God who takes care of everything. If you entrust to him, he takes care of it. So then I become someone who's happy. If you just sit still, the father does everything for you. You know, you have to earn money. Then you you have to go to the market. Then you have to go to the kitchen. Is that what you do? Or do you just wait for your mother to do everything? So it's good if you have a mother there. But then if you're older, you know, that's when you say, oh, it's good when I was underneath my parents. Well, you know what's even better? When you're under God. But God, He doesn't pass away. He's still living. How old is God? You don't even have to ask. You know, He's always youthful and 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 healthy and energized. You don't have to buy Him some restorative, you know. He's is he younger than me then? No, he's always our parent. He's helping us. So let's read verse 6. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Amen. So the Father who says to entrust everything, all you have to do is become righteous and to, to, to shine light. So what does he give the righteous? He gives them happiness. So if you and I have become righteous, then we're happy. If we're happy, we've entrusted everything. We don't have anything. If you haven't entrusted, you will think, oh, if I entrust, will it work? This is the way that Pastor Park lives. This is the way Moses lived for 40 years. You know, if he had planned, then he'd go there, you know, in a short time. But he spent 40 years. That is happiness. If you say, I'll do it, 100% you'll be ruined. Someone entrusts everything, the life of happiness, God takes care of it. So please don't put in, I'll do it. Let's read verse 5 and 6 together. Commit your way to Jehovah. Trust also in him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Amen. So here God's saying, the person who has entrusted everything, they just shine light, this light of righteousness, this light of happiness. Isn't this such an excellent promise? So someone who is happy, they just have this light of happiness. People look at them and think, wow, that's the way I should live. That's it. So that's what he will do for you. Do you believe this? This is the blessing we want to receive. That's why we believe in Jesus. So it's only the righteous who are happy. The righteous is someone who shines. That happiness is light. And that is someone who has entrusted their whole lives. So if you have worries and anxieties, I'm sorry, that person, they're still wrestling with demons. They're someone who can't even win over themselves. The fact that you're worrying, you know, that, that's, that's the devil, but you don't know this. So according to God's word, my life, my life, unless you're righteous, it's not me, but it's demons. That's Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. I've, you know, sung this, I've said this so many times. Why don't I have happiness? Because, because I'm evil. If you're righteous, he'll give it to you. So the person who becomes righteous, what kind of person are they? They're someone without worries. They're someone who's entrusted their whole lives. That's someone who is righteous. When it's the noon day, that's talking about the brightest um, part of the day, the brightest sun. So that's someone who is righteous. So my life, to shine like that, to do well, you know, this is a desire in the world, but there's no way. God says he'll give it only to the righteous. So if you're not doing well, you're not righteous, you're evil. But there are people, they say, oh, next door, they don't believe in Jesus or they're believing fakely. 
you know, but they do well. Sorry. That they're in the middle of making a big a bomb that's going to explode. That's Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. The evil doing well, that is sin, but they don't know this. And they're just doing that. Someone who's truly at peace, someone who's truly entrusted everything. So there's nowhere in the world where you can trust your life. And that's why this habit of my life of always doing things by my strength, this is being an enemy of God, this is demons. But if you repent and you're forgiven, you become righteous. Even as you live on this earth, if you entrust your whole life to Him, what's amazing is you receive peace, This peace is what God gives. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It's not something that I can get. He only gives to those who are righteous, who are happy. So this peace, as you live within this peace and you entrust your whole life, if you're, if you're living peacefully, do you know what workings happen? To Moses, this Exodus for 40 years, what were the workings? In the day, in the night. So it was the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. Always these workings happen. He guides you. So if you entrust everything, it's not me who lives my life. He guides me. You know, I experience these amazing guidances. So I'm sitting there. It's Sunday and I don't know what I'm going to preach for the sermon. So he gives me something in the morning and then I repent of what's wrong. He makes me realize. And so then, so whatever he gives me, that's what I follow. So whatever your situation, whatever my circumstance, I don't know myself. Those people who say they know themselves, you know, that means Socrates. He's crazy because he said, know yourself. No one can know know themselves. Why not? Because I'm deceived by the demons inside of me. That's James chapter 1 verse 22. So we're deceived by our own selves. We don't know ourselves. If you did know yourself, then you should know all the sins that you've committed. But even the sins that I commit, I don't know. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 20. Because I have the the devil, my ancestor's devil inside of me, I don't even know my own sins. And so you you lie. You say you don't lie, but you lie. The person next to you, they, they're like, you've lied. They, you know... But you yourself, you say you don't lie because you're deceived by your demon. So you say, I'm going to live my life. No. If you could know your life, who would be ruined? You know, you think you learn a lot. You're so smart. You won't be ruined. You see these politicians who run the country. You know, you see whichever country, they choose the most educated people. But you see, if any of them have run the country properly, you see if any country does well. The almighty truth. You ask any other religion if they have truth, they don't have it. Because they themselves are creations. They're sinners. They have limits. It's only the the Holy Trinity who is eternal that is truth. So he says that he will take care of our lives. He says in trust, that is happiness. So we should entrust. And he keeps telling us to, to entrust. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, he says, Entrust all your plans to him and he will fulfill them. Everything that I do, I will ruin. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, I say this over and over again. Judges chapter 7, it says, if you do it, you'll be ruined. doesn't matter which army is coming to attack you. He says, just do what I tell you to do. So if you entrust to God, he will tell me what to do. He will guide me. Oh, what should I do? At every moment, he will be responsible. So me, my children doing well, that is happiness. It's not by trying very hard. If you entrust to God, then God will move my children's hearts. God will move my heart. So even if it's two o'clock in the morning, I'll get up and I'll pray. If he tells me to sleep, I'll sleep. If I do it, I'll be ruined. If I do what God tells me to do, then I'll live. Why is it that in my late age, I have disease, I don't do well, my children don't do well? Because you've done everything by your strength. If you do things by your strength, you will be ruined. No matter how busy we are, let's we have to find 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. If I do it, I'll be ruined. Please don't 
Be someone who they do it. You see these older people who have ruined themselves and their children. They're shameless. And then they sit there thinking they've done well towards their children. It is so sad. And they don't even repent. That's me and that's you. There's no one we can throw the stone. It's me. If we realize the word, that's, that's what we realize. So the smarter you are, the more you try to do things by your strength. So even though we've lived the same life of faith in the same church, in the same family or neighborhood, those people who do things by their strength who are so smart compared to those who are ignorant, who are the lowest at church. You compare their children. You see which one does well. It's the ignorant who seem to do well. No, it's those. It's because they have less of this, their own smarts, the less of their, their strength. Does that mean if you're educated, you can't do well? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. Everything you've learned, you put it aside for evangelism. And in front of God, you become someone who is unable. To those who are unable, what does God give? Where is this? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. So in front of God, you have to become somebody who's unable. Don't bring out your smarts and I can do it. Those people who bring those things out, the more you bring it out, they and their children don't do well. So don't look at anything else. Look at your own family and look at your church and look at your hometown. Have a look. You know, since I was young, I've seen those families that seem to do so well. You know, those... Those households that are so uh, seems to do so well in the churches, they don't do. The children don't do well. But those people who seem so ignorant, who are the lowest, they their children do well, and it's according to the word. Does that mean you shouldn't learn? Yes, you should learn for evangelism, just like Apostle Paul. You have to learn a lot. But in front of God, become someone who is unable. Because you can't discern this, please don't go the way of failure. Please don't have this happiness taken away. If I do it, I'll be ruined. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Amen. So it's me that ruins myself. It's me that ruins myself. Oh, I'll try and do things well. I'll try and succeed. I'll live well. I'll try to believe in Jesus well. You'll be ruined. God says, entrust everything. I love you more than your own mother. Entrust to me. But our parents, you know, when they raise their children, they by overprotecting them, they ruin them. Why is that? God is truly righteous, but mothers, they have their greed. You look at these mothers, even though they hide it and they're double-minded, this is what they have inside of them. So those people who couldn't study well at school, they want to make their children study so well because of, because of their bitterness. You know, there are people... You know, you, that, that student who was the teacher's pet and they were jealous of that, you know, in order to revenge that, they, they use their children. And so the child, as soon as they come out of school, they take them to Taekwondo and then they take them to the music academy and then they th take them to the art academy and the child comes home and, you know, they're, they're having a nosebleed, you know, because... It, they they had to also learn computer. So everything they couldn't do, you know, they're relieving their stress onto the child. There's so many parents like that. And so if you entrust to the mother, they just, through their children, they try to relieve. They try to satisfy what they feel is their weakness. But God's not like that. God, he is just. So if we entrust to God, anyone can do well. So, this is so good. It's so peaceful. Why is it that it's only me that has to live like this? That's why I keep telling you so that we can do this together. You know what is great, better than this worship? What pleases God more? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Don't just say that. God, He 
is pleased with justice more than worship to someone who is happy, someone who is just, someone who is righteous. So let's find Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. The righteous are happy. Why? Because God gives happiness to the righteous. And if you live as righteous, he says he's more pleased with that than worship. If you entrust your whole life to him and you live as someone righteous, that's what he is so pleased with. This is such a precious word. So you don't know what God is most pleased with. People think that it's this worship. Rather than this, listening to God's word, he's more pleased. And then forgiving others, he's more pleased with. And being righteous, he's more pleased with that. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Let's read verse 3. To do righteousness and justice is desired by Jehovah more than sacrifice. Amen. The righteous, they know justice. So whether you're in the government or in the law, courts, why aren't you just? Because if you're evil, you don't know justice. The evil, when you divide something, you know, if, you div- if there's 10 things and you divide three here and the others over there, they say that that's just. The evil, they don't know what justice, fairness, equality is. So the righteous receive happiness from God. So whatever they do, they're just. Wherever they go, they shine light like the noonday sun. Someone who lives like this is someone who is happy. To the righteous, he gives happiness. So what am I like? Well, then I'll have nothing. I entrust everything. My children I trust to God. My life I entrust to God. That's someone who entrusts everything to God. So then how do they live? You know, you know, you run a business and it doesn't work, work well, so you entrust to the bank. If the bank takes care of it, well, the bank, because, because they're better than me, they'll revive that business. Because God is almighty, whatever you've ruined, he will revive it. And that's why Romans chapter 4, verse 17, he says, you've killed it, I'll make it live. You've ruined it and it's gone, he says, I'll make it be. That is someone who is happy, they've entrusted everything in their life. So those people who have entrusted their businesses, that doesn't mean go home and just lie down. It means to be faithful. Because your boss is God. So because that that means you'll obey well. If they say come early, you'll go early. And you you tidy up and, and then God will send customers. And so if you say, God, oh, what should I do? You've sent this person. If you do it, you'll be ruined. But if you keep entrusting to God, he will do amazing things. Those who are harmful, he'll turn them away. Those who should be working there, he'll send them. He keeps sending the crows. So your life will become happy. It will become prosperous. So this is the way we want to live. So God, he commands. What does he command? He says, if you don't entrust your life, are you going to worry or are you going to be at peace? If you don't entrust, you worry. You're anxious. So if you're anxious, everything you do by your strength are you going to succeed or fail you'll be ruined no matter how much you use your head you'll be ruined from President Lee Seung-man until now I don't know if any of them have done it but they change everything They, they so we, we keep changing them why? because they keep being ruined we change them this way we change them that way so because everything you do you're ruined so they keep we they keep putting new people there thinking, oh, maybe they won't ruin it. But they do, and so they keep changing. So God says, whoever you use, if you do it, you're going to be ruined. But Potiphar, in Genesis chapter 39, Potiphar, Joseph, who was with God, he who Joseph, who entrusted everything to God, he used him as an overseer. So did that household become poor or rich? They became rich. Even though he he may not receive salvation, because of using a blessed man, he was able to live in abundance. So it, if you believe that God's word happens exactly, it's not me, but I have to entrust everything to God. So God, he commands this of us. Let's find Philippians. 
So he says, chapter 4, he says, I have to guard over your heart and your thoughts. That's when you become someone who trusts everything. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. So my heart, everything I do, I'll be ruined. But if I entrust my heart, because God controls over my heart, that's success. Seems like you're not doing well, but you'll succeed. So this is the person standing in front of you who is a witness. Oh, pastor, won't I be, won't I be ruined? No. Everywhere you go, there'll be miracles. If you don't try this, you won't know. No matter how much I use my head. So even though we say this is the time, the times of the computer. You know, the computer is something that people have to, have to control over. So it's not the times of computer. People have to put things inside of it. You know, that's just a way of evangelism. You know, people have made it for themselves. But if you don't put any input in there, nothing's going to come out. But God, He can make what isn't to be. That's starting from creation. He created the world by His words. If you can't believe this creation, then you're a fake. Genesis chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. If you don't receive the gift of faith from God, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, if you don't have this faith, you can't believe that creation was created by His Word. So then if you don't believe, you're evil. If you're evil, you don't have happiness, and so you'll be ruined. Your, your descendants will be ruined. God's Word, it is truth. So for us, let's go the way where we're not going to be ruined, where we can be happy. What is it to be happy? It's someone who's entrusted everything. Then your righteousness, which is more important than worship, than sacrifice, then this will shine like the noonday son Solomon you know these days transportation is really good but back then transportation was pretty bad and they would seek out Solomon from so far away why to hear his wisdom when they went to Solomon you know they would have to go by donkey you know by by you know by boat or it was so hard but why did they go to hear this wisdom what is this wisdom it's something that is so amazing you can't find it in this world so even the Queen of Sheba went there from Africa, from Ethiopia. So today, why is it people come all the way, all the way in the world, to all the way to Korea? Why do they come to Busan First Church? To receive wisdom. It's exactly according to this word. So whether you have your business or whatever you do, whether whatever your children do, how is it in this tiny corner of Korea? Why is it they're coming from all over the world? If God sends them, they come. You need to receive this blessing. To someone who's entrusted everything, that's what he says he will do. So even my life, where I've ruined everything, God, he will release that. He will solve it. To receive this blessing, to pass it to my children, that's why we're here. According to God's word, you will surely pass it down. Let's do well. Let's do more well. This is happiness. So if I do things according to my heart, I'll be ruined. We've now heard God's voice. So then, how is it I don't do things according to my heart? So these companies, because they do it, they're ruined. So they ask these banks to take over. Just like that, if we entrust our hearts to God, then God will rule over my heart and my thoughts. From that moment, you will succeed. That is happiness. God comes inside of me. God who loves me more than my own mother, just like your mother takes care of you, God will be responsible for you. That's when you're happy, you're righteous. Wherever you go, you'll do things justly. And so God, he will be pleased more with that than your worship and you'll give glory to God. So my heart and my thoughts, how does God take care of it? Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, let's read it together. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's when you do this, Almighty God, who surpasses all comprehension, that's when He guards your hearts and your minds. When? Only those people in Christ Jesus. Only those people who do force their repentance. It's the hearts of those who do forced repentance. It's only that them that he will guard. 
So you say, oh, I'm going to do this business. What's going to happen in the future? If I do it, I'll be ruined. You don't even need to ask. You need to find out. You don't need to research. You say, oh, we need to do some market research. You see, whatever country, they have done the best market research, those governments. So, for example, let's say there's this state minister who's running a business. All the people underneath him, according to the best standards in their country, they have used all the best market research to see if it's going to work or not. They've used every method that man can do. But as they do it, are they ruined or do they succeed? They're all ruined. And that's why they change over the state minister because they've ruined everything. If they didn't, they wouldn't change them over. So then they ruin and they change they, over and over. No matter what specialty you have, it doesn't work. So God, he just if he just looks at them and he says, you know what? It's not working, so he just changes them over. But if we depend on God, he so we can know, just like Joseph, you know, seven years of abundance, seven years of famine. What is was he a fortune teller? If God does it, you'll know everything. If you entrust your heart and your thoughts to God. God, He knows everything. He's so exact. He's the owner of the whole world. So we have to entrust our hearts inside of Christ Jesus, only to those who do four-step repentance. So verse 7, who is it? Let's read again who it is that God guards them. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if God is with me, because I'm happy, I'll be at peace. I'll have health. So we call this peace and health. And where is that person? That's someone who is in Christ Jesus. Then God watches over their hearts and their thoughts. So someone in Christ Jesus, it's only they who God guards their hearts and minds. So if I'm in Christ Jesus, if I'm someone who's God's guarding my hearts and minds, what kind of person am I? Well, it says, and so what is it we have to do? Verse 6, if you have entrusted your whole lives to God, let's read verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. So by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, someone who's entrusted everything to God, it's when we do this, when we've entrusted, then God will guard over your hearts and your minds and be responsible for everything. And if you're on your way to being ruined, he will change your thoughts to the thoughts of God so that you will succeed. Everything that you're about to be ruined, he will change so that you will succeed. But if you do it, you and three and four generations will be ruined. But if you entrust to God, he will change it to good and make a thousand generations do well. So we have to receive one of the two. So do you want to, you do it and be ruined? Or do you want to entrust to God and receive the blessings of peace and the blessings where your descendants do well? That's what God is asking us. So he says, if you do this, if you entrust everything, then you will receive the blessings of peace and he will guard over your hearts and your thoughts always. So everything I do by my thoughts, I'll be ruined. But if you entrust your life and you become righteous and you're happy, then everything that you think, they're not my thoughts, they're God's thoughts. So sometimes you'll have these bizarre thoughts. You calculate by the world and it, it's not going to work. But God tells you to do it. And after you do it, miracles happen. And that's me. I'm living this life as a witness. I should be going this way. I've, I've planned this. I've, con I've made a contract. You know, they're waiting for this. But God, he says, go that way. And I just go. And after I go, these amazing miracles happen. It's not my thoughts because God's doing it. So someone who's 
who's there, that's someone who's righteous. You've entrusted everything and you're at peace. So when you go like that, you think, oh no, what's, what if there's an accident? That's not God's thoughts. If you're worrying and you're anxious, they're not God's thoughts. Your heart's at peace. So you look at our church. This person whose finger was, was cut off, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, they say doctors have the skills to, to, to stick it back on. If you go straight away, you can stick it back on. I don't know, but these days they say you can do that. So one of the, the large hospitals, they, they so, you know, stuck it back on. But this finger, it didn't live. It died. And so they came to me for prayer. So it was blue, it was yellow with, with pus. There was nothing else on this, on this, sorry, it wasn't a finger, it was a hand. And so he came for his hand to be prayed for. So that hospital, they were saying it's, it's, it's not going to work because they went to a university hospital, they said it's not going to work, it's too rotten. They went to another hospital and they said, no, it has to be cut off. And so they came for prayer in order for it to be cut off. So when I looked at it, there was this yellow pus, and it was it was there was this it was all blue or swollen. It looked like it looked like you know uh, an org like a it looked like some organ. I didn't know why they came, but they came to say, oh, they'd been to all these hospitals and after the surgery, it didn't work. So they had to now go back and get it cut off. So they were getting, so Lazarus, after three days, you know, he was rotting for three days in that heat. You know, your stomach and intestines, once once you die, that starts to rot straight away because that food waste is, is all rotting. So after three days, he would have been rotten. But Jesus, in John chapter 11, he says, he doesn't say, oh, let's heal all your insides first and then come. No, he said, come out. So if you have faith, it's amen. If you don't have faith, you reset, re, you study, hmm, will those rotten bits, will, will it work? So I prayed for him. I said, Lord, he's going to get this cut off. I don't know what to pray for. And he said, Lazarus, who rotted, you know, even he lived. What do you mean, surgery? And so that, they are the thoughts that the Father gave me. You know, how can I pray that he'll go and have surgery to get it cut off? How, you know, how can I pray, God, please cut it off? I couldn't pray like that. So then I opened my eyes and I asked God, Lord, what, what can we do to make this live? And he said, put it in the water three times. If you put something pussy in the water, it, that's, it's, that's, you know, that's so bad. So I couldn't do that by my thoughts. But I said, bring water. And they said, what water? I said, cold water. And they said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, put it in the water. And so after the pastor prayed, he's asking for crazy things. My wife wouldn't bring the water. She said, oh, you're starting again. She would say that often. And so one of the saints went and brought the water. And so we put it in there three times. And what do you mean? Cut it off. God revived it. Entrust everything. These are God's workings. He does it exactly. It's God who works. Let's receive this blessing. It will happen. It will happen. To those who have entrusted everything, God is responsible for them. I experienced something so amazing. And that's why John chapter 11, Lazarus coming out after three days, I say amen to that. You know, all of that rotting, it was healed. So when God says to entrust, when the Almighty One says to entrust, all you have to do is obey exactly. So then he watches, over, over, guards my heart and my, my heart and my mind because we don't entrust that's why he doesn't guard over it so how do we have to entrust first of all we have to pray second we have to request thirdly we have to give thanks that is giving thanks oh uh, sorry that is entrusting so then what is prayer what is request well when we pray all this time what do we say this prayer is so if i want to preach about this it's going to take another one two hours so praying is the prayer of four-step repentance that comes out in the other tapes
So if you do four step repentance, do you become evil or righteous? Whichever evil person, they will become righteous. If you do four step repentance all this time, even just to a moment ago, you were doing bad things, you become righteous. You don't have a past, you become a new person. So you become righteous. So then you have to request to God. It's those who are righteous when you request. That's when he listens. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. He only hears the prayer of the righteous. So you have to pray. After doing four-step repentance, you become righteous. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. So you pray and then you become righteous. And so then God gives you happiness to someone who is righteous. That's when you can request to God. This request, this supplication, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, let's find it. So God doesn't receive the prayer without faith. To do four-step repentance, it, to become righteous, it's that person that he hears their prayer. So this request has to be on top of faith. Let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and are overflowing with gratitude. So you have to be established on top of that faith. So after you do the third step, after when you repent, after the third step, the first, you realize your sin. Second, you ask for God for forgiveness. The third, you cleanse your conscience. Then, then he gives you the gift of faith. So with this faith, as you give thanks, the last step, this is the sign that Jesus showed us, the sign of Jonah. It's when we give thanks, that's when miracles happen. That's when there are answers. So step being established on your faith when you give thanks that's when you request that is what supplication is so prayer is four step repentance and then when you request after you do the third step of four step repentance and you receive faith then when you give thanks that sign of Jonah so after verse 1 to 8 that third step verse 9 that's when you give thanks, verse 9 and 10, that's when Jonah receives the miracles. So to someone who requests like this, that's who God listens to. So it's by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving that you request to God and you entrust all of your worldly worries to him. Then that's when he'll take care of it. Psalms chapter 37, verse 5 to 6. He will, he will take all of your life and be responsible for it. And your heart and your thoughts, he will be responsible. So it's no longer your thoughts of ruin. Your thoughts, your heart, he will guard them and he will change them to his heart. All things he will make you do well. So then we change to God in our hearts. And he says, you will shine like the noonday sun. Everywhere you go, you will shine. Hallelujah. We believe we have received this blessing. It is glory to God. This is the way you should live. You should be at peace. You should be healthy. Receive everything. Don't worry as you live. Your heart and your thoughts I will guard over. Oh, pastor, then what's going to happen if you do this? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. This is the blessing you should live by. Let's find Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. This is an, an incredible blessing that you will live by. You say, oh, my parents didn't believe. Don't be discouraged. It's starting from me. I just have to do well. You say, but I wasn't, I didn't believe yesterday. You know, now, it's now. He will give to you faith now and happiness now. Well, why am I not happy then? All you have to do is this. So we didn't, So now all we have to do is entrust. Once you entrust, God will be responsible. So whether it's our country's government or we say it's men who are doing it, but we pray and entrust to God. Father God, you know, all of the economy, everything, all the problems of this country, we entrust to you. God will hear the prayer of the righteous. So even though those politicians may want to do bad things, God changes their thoughts and, and then we do well. So it's not they who have sinned, it's we who have to entrust to God to receive happiness from Him, to truly live as righteous. But because we haven't done this, that's our sin. And so there's no one to throw the stone. Who can throw the stone at the adulterous woman? 
John chapter 8, verse 7. No one can throw that stone. It's me that's done the wrong. I haven't prayed for them properly. It's me that's done the wrong. Once we realize this, how can you spit at someone or throw the stone? We can't. So when we live like this, that's when our church becomes one. Our nation becomes one. We will do more and more well. Let's read together Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Amen. So who is it that works within us? So it's God who guards over our heart and our thoughts. So to, if you have him inside of you, whatever you do, he will do better more than whatever you think. Let's live like this happily. This is what happiness is, to entrust everything, to have peace, to have health. All of my heart and my thoughts, he will be responsible for. How good is this promise? Let's not have this promise taken away. And it's when we do this, beyond all comprehension, uh, this God who loves us more than our mothers, in Christ Jesus, as long as you stay inside of there, your heart and your mind, he will be responsible. If it doesn't work, come to me. If God isn't, can't take responsibility, then I'll have to. But even that is pride. How? How can I be responsible for you? God is the one who makes alive or dead. He gives blessings, takes away. He makes you have disease or heals it. He raises you up or lowers you down. Even if you are in the trash heap, you have nothing. He will, he will make you like Joseph. You know, so God will be responsible for you. How good is this? How can we not pray and cry out to the Lord? Let's entrust with repentance. On top of this faith, on top of thanksgiving, let's entrust. We will go back with happiness. Are you sick anywhere? Entrust. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. I will take on your sickness. Lord, oh, I have more power than you. I have to take my sickness. Don't be proud. Entrust, entrust. He says he will carry your sickness. All our anxieties, he will take care of. This peace that God gives, after we entrust everything, these children who have entrusted everything, the father and mother, you know, their faces are all scrunched up because of money. You know, they're like worried because it's Children's Day. You know, they're filled with worries. However, however, because it's Children's Day, they go to the park. The children, they're happy, they're dancing. You know, the parents, even though the parents are worrying. You know why? Because the child has entrusted everything. Someone has entrusted everything to Almighty God. How can you have a scrunched up face? How can, you, sorry, how can your face be like a stone? You know, if we entrust, then we're happy to the righteous he gives happiness. And he will rule over our heart and our thoughts. And then that heart, whatever he works inside of you, you will receive amazing blessings. I'm one of those witnesses. And I be we believe that you will be witnesses too. When we call upon the Lord three times, when we cry out, Lord, if you cry out, Mom, you know, that, that bull is going to run away. When you call out, Lord, Satan runs away. The devil runs away. That Satan that's tormenting your children and our country will run away. Let's call upon the Lord three times. Let's entrust for three minutes. Lord. 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 My Lord. We've lived wrongly. Please forgive us this wrong of living my life. Please forgive us. Please forgive us for our wrongs, our past of us living. May this be a time where we entrust everything to you. May we entrust our lives to you. May we entrust everything to you. Lord, thank you. May we only receive this peace that you give. Please guard over our hearts, our thoughts. Please guard them. Please work within us. At this time, may we entrust all of our lives. Our children, may they do well. By us entrusting, may we receive this promise. May we entrust all of our children to you. 
may you be responsible for them more than our mothers in all things you are almighty father you promised that you love us more than our mothers and you told us to entrust our lives may we repent and become righteous and may we receive the gift of faith that you give and by this faith by thanksgiving may we trust our lives and may we receive this blessing of peace may we re receive the blessing where our children do more well may we receive the blessing where our country and our people do more well and according to your promise may we live only singing praises may this happen for our families according to your word we've entrusted everything and may we we believe that we become the most happy blessed man in jesus name we thank you and bless amen <laughs>